Hello, hello, and welcome back to the Taylor Louise Budgets channel, where we are finally bringing you a quarter two financial reset. So I've been planning to do this video for over a month, and it's just taken me a really long time to actually sit down and work out what I want to do with my finances to reset at the end of the quarter. This is not something that I know whether I'll do throughout the whole year, but when we set the goals at the end of 2022, we kind of, you don't know until you get the year started what you actually want to do, how your life is going to be reorganized. And I feel like three monthly check-ins is kind of the way to go. So if you want to join me, see what I'm doing, see what I'm changing about my finances in this next three months of the year, then stay tuned. All right, so... I normally would start with a blank slate and kind of write in what I'm doing as I go with you, but no, this is, we're going to be upfront. We're chatting all things, my finances. So you can see some of my planning here, sinking fund totals and cash exchange. I might be doing that in this video. It might be a separate video. You'll have to wait and see what I decide. But quarter two financial reset, there are a few things that I wanna talk about that I want to do. And one of the main things is that I wanna consolidate some of my bank accounts. So you might know that I have this binder here. This is my digital sinking funds binder. So emergency has its own bank account. IOG has its own bank account. Savings has its own bank account. Now, annual is with my sinking fund money, sinking fund placeholder money in one bank account together. Debt is just in cash here and these other things are just in cash at the back here. But that is a lot and juggling that money, I can't help but wonder if I'm wasting opportunities in terms of interest growth. So there are a few things that are changing and this is why. So I wanna close two of these savings accounts. Part of the reason why I wanna do that is because I've looked at what these accounts are. Three of them I created back in 2015. So my normal bank account where my cushion lies, where money comes in, money comes out, that's not what I'm talking about here. That is my standard account that was made in 1999 when I was two years old and hasn't changed. But these ones, three of them I made in 2015 when I was trying to get on top of my finances, becoming an adult, etc. But one of them I actually made in 2021 and I had a look and there's two different kinds. So I don't know if I'm going to zoom you in or what I'm going to do to show you this, but I have one kind of bank account that is the same and it earns 1.85% interest each month. I believe that's as long as the balance isn't lower than it was at the beginning of the month. I'm not hundred percent sure on that. My other two accounts earn 0.4% interest but if I put money in, if that account grows in the month, I get a bonus 3.75% interest. So I have two kinds of savings accounts and I think that the two different kinds are useful. However, do I need to have four of them? Could I consolidate and have one of each? Likely, yes. So <laughs> that is what we're going to talk about. That is what I want to do. I'm not necessarily saying I'm logging on to my bank at the end of this video and I'm closing it right now, but this is what I am going to do so that when I do my quarter three financial reset, I will only have two accounts. So I'm not saying I'm also going to wait three months, but it is a work in progress, but it is something that I have decided to do. So you can kind of see here, I'm kind of planning it. So IOG is going to no, no longer be its own separate account. Sinking fund, annual, whatever that account will remain. My savings account, which only has, let me say, $600 in it, that will close and my emergency will stay. So emergency currently has 2,300 in it, that will stay. IOG, that money will go, it will be moved. And Savings will go, that money will be moved. And then my annual has 1100 and in the same account is my sinking fund placeholders, which is 2600, that account will remain as well. So this is how things are gonna be. I don't plan on merging anything with my emergency account. I think that emergency should be its own separate account that I never touch, but only grows. Um, but I have some other updates. So the next thing that we're gonna talk about is my IOG update. Now, IOG, for anyone that isn't aware, is like an IOU fund for the money that I owe my other half. So he is my fiance now, but there was a period of time in our lives where we were pretty fresh to dating and he supported me through university. I had an injury that meant I couldn't work for a number of months and he covered all of the finances. I rode off my car, he bought a new car and gave me his, these sorts of things. And we came up with a fair total of how much I should contribute to back to the relationship. Um, and that was totally agreed and I tracked that. 
um, and it's money that I now owe him. And it's a weird situation to be in where I owe him money, but yet we've now bought a house together, we're living together, we're getting married, these sorts of things. And you would think, let's just scrap that. But we as a couple, I don't, I don't want that. I don't, I'm, an, I'm a very independent person. I don't want a gift of 20 grand from the significant other in my life. I don't think that it is a place to grow and develop as a couple from such a place of deficit in my mind. And, you know, he might not need that money, but that is not up for discussion. However, this is what we have decided to do. And um, in buying this house, there is a certain amount of money that when we sell the house that he gets back because of um, deposits and so forth. So before we split up the 50-50, he gets his, um, his portion of the deposit back. Um, which is 100% of the deposit, let me say. So <laughs> he will get the deposit back, but also we are deciding that we're go going to tack on that debt to that also. So I don't have to worry about saving that money back, but it will come out of the equity of this house when we do eventually sell it. So that is that makes my life easier, it makes his life easier, it makes our relationship easier, and it means that I don't have this debt weighing over my head. So thank you so much to him who doesn't watch this video <laughs> um, for his generosity in that offer to me as well, because it is important to both of us that that money be followed through. So as such, because I no longer have to save that money, that changes things for my plans this year, because I believe it was one of my goals to save up a certain amount of that money and pay it back. So because I no longer need to do that, I can dismantle this fund and therefore I can dismantle this account. But as we discussed, there is $2,900 in that account. So that means I have $2,900 to work out where I want to put that, what priorities am I going to prioritize with that money. So I need to nominate money destination of that 2.9K. I know that maybe I'm, I'm very much considering finishing my emergency fund because you might know that my goal is to grow my emergency fund by $1,000 every year. Now I've, I need to get to 3,000 by the end of this year and I'm at 2,320 currently. So that is an option. Like if I've got 2,900, I could minus off the extra 780 and just put 780 into my emergency fund and still have $2,000 to play with and then not have to stuff my emergency fund for the rest of the year. So that is an option, undecided if that's totally what I'm going to do. I do, I would like to put some money towards savings challenges because I've been really struggling to budget that money out of my paycheck. However, I worry about doing this because I don't want it to go, oh, well, I saved up this money and now I can spend it on this, that and the other. I really want this money to be purposeful and towards a future goal. So I need to be careful about that one. And then obviously I would love to put some of this money to my debt. I am trying to pay off my car loan that I still owe over 20 grand on. Um, and we might be buying land in the new year that we've got our contract on and that we've had our contract on for almost three years now. We did not plan to have land and a house, but that is kind of where we're at. So I do need to be careful with my money and with my spending. So those are some things that I am looking at, discussing, working on at the moment. Then we have savings. So I said I was going to close this savings account. And as we saw, there is currently only $600 in there. And I'm a little bit confused because what is savings? <laughs> what is this account of mine? And I think that is partially why it doesn't have much money in it. Because originally I was using this before we moved into this house when I knew that I was going to spend money on furniture and look at furnishing this house. I wanted to have some money put aside that's like my house savings so that not everything was this like debt money and not everything had a name, but that like this money I had somewhere to draw from when it came to buying furniture for our house. Now, I'm not saying your house is fully furnished, but I'm in a place of pause. Like I don't really want to set up an office just yet. I don't know what I want to do with our bedrooms. I don't quite know what else to do, but we've got our new fridge. We've got our main house furniture. We've got, you know, we've got bench seatings. We've got a dining table. We've got an, our new couch that I mentioned that. <laughs> so we've got our new bedroom furniture. We have all of the like main things. I've even bought a new like shoe rack for myself. So I've got all of the main things that I'm kind of on pause with not needing to fund the house much more, especially considering we have our joint account and we're saving up for house furniture kind of together there. The main reason I was saving up for house furniture because it was how I was paying back some of the money that I owed my other half. So because of that, and because I already have, I have Tato, I have the sinking fund for spending money on myself. So that's kind of like a savings account. I have an emergency fund, which is kind of like a savings account for any emergencies. And I have a bill binder where I have buffer money for any upcoming bills that are unexpected. So do I need a generic savings? I don't know. 
if I put that money in like a Tato, am I just gonna spend it on crap? Probably. But do I need to have a savings account when I have debt? That's a rhetorical question. I don't, is it a rhetorical question? I don't know. I don't know where I sit with this, but I am dismantling that account. So am I going to sit that cash in my sinking funds and still call it savings or am I gonna get rid of it totally? So we can see here that there are still some decisions to make about where I'm gonna send that IRG money. There's still some decisions to make about whether or not I'm still going to have a savings fund. Um, but this is all part of financially resetting, right? I could have made all of these decisions and then just come and go, I'm doing this, I'm doing this, I'm doing this. But I find it useful to think things out and think things through and talk things through. And I know that you're the same, right? Like I, you don't know exactly what to do with your money, just as I don't know exactly what to do with mine. And I like talking it out and you seeing this process of deciding what to do. I talked recently, like I know majority of my audience is, you know, either Australians who also do cash budgeting or people that just like to see money <laughs> on the screen or, you know, Americans that also do cash budgeting and are very much in this world. But there's a portion of the reason that I create this channel. Um, and I know I talk about being a teacher and working in a low socioeconomic area, but there's a big need for financial literacy. Um, it is pretty frequent that I have students say, oh, I found your YouTube channel. And as much as that is a little bit cringy and no, I don't create and curate this content for that audience. I do recognize that I am an influencer in these children's lives, like in my classroom, not, not just online. Um, and I know that a lot of these children don't get to see financial literacy at home and talking through these op options and actually being able to prioritize the money that you have in your life is financial literacy. Um, and I'm not saying that I'm perfect. I'm not saying I make the perfect decisions. I probably shouldn't have bought an expensive house. I should probably shouldn't have bought a brand new car. There's so many things that I shouldn't have done if I talk to Dame, Dave Ramsey and he sees the amount of debt that I currently have, but I'm in a really good situation. I have a good income. I have a stable job. I have career progression. I got a promotion last week. I haven't even told you about that. No, it doesn't mean more money, unfortunately. I do a lot of things on the side for extra money. I use my credentials to earn more money because I have big goals and I am, I am building a generational wealth and I didn't come from money. My family doesn't have a lot of money. Um... I don't get to rely on inheritances or anything like that. I have to build this for myself and I'm working really dang hard to do that. And I'm getting emotional. Um, and I like being able to model that on here. If any of my students do come across these videos, it is to show you that money isn't something to be embarrassed by, but it's also not something to throw away. Like these are serious decisions and you really can set yourself up and your future up just through how you work hard and manage your money. Okay, I'm gonna get off my high horse and we are going to move on to the next part, which is to check in on some 2023 goals because it's been three months. Honestly, I look at my vision board all the time, but what does it stand for? What goals did I set for this year? Let's find out. So, hey, hey, hey what have we got? So in terms of finance, so I wanted to save an extra thousand dollars for my emergency fund that is tracking well, and I may be finishing that off if I do choose to move some of that IOG money straight into that emergency fund. Um, I, the, the main thing that I'm hesitant about there is we talked about bonus interest and so forth. And I earn bonus interest by putting into it every month. So part of me kind of wants to just slowly, but surely just put in that $40 every fortnight um, until it hits that $1,000 mark so that I can continue to make that bonus interest. Because once I hit that $1,000, I'm then just going to let it sit. So part of me wants to do t tack off, tack off. <laughs> part of me wants to do it slowly for that reason. But even if I still want to do it slowly for that reason, there's no reason why I can't budget that money, leave that in the IG account and continue to just transfer straight from there instead of having to take $40 out of my actual salary budget because that is very tight at the moment, especially with the interest rates and my mortgage constantly going up. So continue to zero-based budget. I don't see myself ever not zero-based budgeting. So yes, I'm gonna, I have been doing that. We'll continue to IOG balance 15K. So that is about me wanting to pay off part of my IOG balance. And I'm going to cross this one out because that's not happening. We've now made the decision that that's not a goal for this year. 
savings balance 5k so this one's interesting as well because if i'm getting rid of my savings am i going to be trying to grow my savings so um i'm not even sure if i want to do that one uh extra debt payment of 5k that is still definitely a goal i'm not currently putting enough money towards that i need to prioritize some of my bonus income towards that to be able to hit that goal decrease sinking fund spending i have been spending a little bit lately but i think in general the amount that i'm budgeting into my sinking funds has dropped significantly this year so that is well on track and reduce grocery splurging i'm taking advantage of sales a lot more i'm taking advantage of flybys offers a lot more and decreasing how much i'm spending on groceries so that one i'm definitely working towards accomplishing obviously even though i've been accomplishing it so far unless i continue to do it through the year i'm not considering that complete sign three paid sponsors i've got one i've got one coming up later this month um so maybe i'll do another two i'm not really like who will pay me i i have no desire to ruin my authenticity for the sake of a buck like <laughs> the money that i earn from taylor louise budgets is nothing compared to the amount of work that i put into it this really is a hobby for me um this really is joy and fun for me and you'll see that through some of the other things that i say in this category but as much as i would like to yes continue to grow in my business this is not a priority i the paycheck is not why i do this um post two times a week on Instagram. I have been doing that. Post two times a week on YouTube. I have been doing that. I have a really busy season of work coming up. So I will be taking advantage of the school holidays and pre-filming some content. So I hope you don't mind that some of it might seem a bit outdated, but I really do want to stay accountable to my two uploads a week. And I need to take advantage of some of my time to pre-film that because yes, very, 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 very busy seasons of work upcoming. I have about nine income streams this year, guys. So you're not a priority. <laughs> Um, 2.5k subs. So I just hit the 2k mark. So I'm well on track for that one. And then 1k Insta followers. I'm going to highlight this one off because yes, I have hit the 1k Instagram followers. So thank you so much to everyone that follows me over on Instagram and then see accountant at tax time. So obviously that's not relevant yet or this quarter or next quarter even, um, live with Marlene and Erin. There are still plans to do that, but we are very slow off the mark in organizing that. So girls, if you're seeing this, let's, let's, let's get this done. Let's get this moving and grooving because I would love to see your pretty faces live again. And then we move into my professional, my work, my teacher life. So be more assertive. I have been so much more assertive this year. I am loving my work persona at the moment. She is getting shiz done. Plan in advance. I definitely think my attitude in this regard has changed a lot and I have been, I mean, I'm, <laughs> I'm one of the most organized people I know, but I have been even more organized and just there's a calmness that comes with that and I'm enjoying the state that I'm in. I'm, I feel myself becoming more and more confident every year with my teacher self. Improve resources. Yes, I have been improving resources for everyone. We are doing some things with iPads this year and I'm creating resources for that. So definitely a lot of work to do in this space, but I'm really enjoying being there and flourishing work friendships. I think our staff room has really bonded this year um, and it's been some, it's been really good to see and be a part of. Personal goals, simplify meals, healthy. Okay, I've been eating a lot of takeout of late because I've been so busy. However, in terms of prepping lunches for work, I definitely have been in this simplify meals and make healthy meals front and I would love to continue that. Lose five kilos. <laughs> we'll try, we'll try. It was still working on that one. Save takeout for weekends. Yeah. I think this is a seasonal thing, isn't it? The busier you are, the more you eat takeout. And I've definitely noticed that. I need to get on my grind of this and maintaining this, not just at lunchtimes, but for dinners as well. Gym activity three to four weekly. I actually would love to go to the gym three times a week, but I lately, my work schedule has meant that I have not been able to. And it's interesting because I've been the kind of person that's wasted a gym membership in the past because I just like haven't wanted to go. And I have been doing the exact opposite of I desperately want to go, but I cannot find the time unless it's going to like send me to bed later and I need my sleep. So I need to work on this. I'm definitely going to enjoy being able to go a lot more on these school holidays. Um, and hopefully I can come up with some sort of better schedule to get myself to the gym more frequently because I, I have that strong desire to go. Read 20 books. I'm already at 12 for the year so far and we're in April, the 
second or third or something second I think so I dare say I will achieve this goal but I have been on pause with reading because again my work schedule has been so crazy at the moment slow mornings um, no so I've been waking up early for sure but I'm in a season of NAPLAN marking so I've been working full-time and marking for QCAA's like NAPLAN for all the students so <laughs> I have not had slow mornings. I've been waking up and walking half dazed to my computer at 5.30, 5.45 a.m. and marking for two hours before getting ready for work and then going to work full hour and then coming home and doing more marking. So slow mornings, no, but it's still a goal. Let's, let, let's get to that place. Prioritize health over hustle. I've been hustling more than, more than ever, but my attitude towards my health has been good. I've been very um, good at checking in with myself and what I can manage and what I can maintain and making sure that I prioritize my mental and physical health. So even though I would like to be able to prioritize it more, my, mentally I am thinking about this, my actions aren't aligning with it much at the moment because I've been prioritizing the money. Um, and I guess that's something that I will deal with probably forever. This idea of being productive and making money versus the idea of sitting down and relaxing and prioritizing my body and my physical and mental health. Um, and that those two things will always be at odds with each other because the more that I work, the more money I make and the more money I make, the more I think that I'm going to achieve a state of, I don't know, happiness, contentment. <laughs> I don't know. Still working on that. Relax, list anxiety. I... I've still been making lists, but I definitely have a lot less anxiety around it. I have less like, oh, I need to get this done. I need to get this done mentality. I have been calming myself down in that regard. However, I do think that when I don't write lists, when I don't write down my commitments, I then get anxiety around not having things written down. But in terms of what I was referring to when I wrote this, I have calmed down a lot. Now we look at my overarching goals. So growth financially. Yes. Personally. Yes. Professionally. Yes. Did we not hear? I got a promotion. Flourish, find success, not force it. I think yes. I got pushed to do this promotion. I it wasn't something that I was trying to force. It wasn't something that I went, oh, I really want that. I it kind of just came to me. Um, and I've been finding a lot of success in a lot of ways lately, and that's part of what's been making me busier. But I'm quite enjoying how my hard work has paid off. And then pleasure, enjoyment, not productivity. So I'm really going to see if I can meet this in these holidays of just not trying to force it, not even trying to force pleasure, just actually relaxing, just actually taking a step back and going, you know what, I'm just going to spend the day in bed watching Grey's Anatomy, might go to the gym and just live a life of leisure for a couple of weeks. Um, yeah, so let's do more of that. And then avoid the hustle, the busy, and the overwhelm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think that'll be a forever thing for me. Just constantly working on trying to not be overwhelmed by those things. Now, I know this was a long time, me just talking and me writing in a book, but I hope you did enjoy it. Um, I know I kind of didn't do anything. I just <laughs> said what I wanted to do. Um, so maybe we should draft what I am going to do. Is that an option? I said I'm going to close two, those two accounts. So that's all well and good. Obviously, my sinking fund totals and cash exchange will need to be a separate video. And maybe, okay, what I'll do is I will move this money in that video. So this is going to be part one of my quarter two financial reset. And then I will make a part two as well where I actually move this money around. Okay, the decision is made. I hope you did enjoy this video. Go down below, click like, subscribe, hit the bell to be notified every single time I upload, which is two times a week on Thursdays and Sundays at 6 p.m. Australian Eastern Standard Time. And I'll see you next time. Bye, guys.